Aren't you tired of doing manually version control? For example, creating V1, V2, V3 versions of the same Power BI report file. If yes, today I will show you how to do that automatically with the help of Git. With Git, you don't need to create multiple versions of the same Power BI file because everything you do, every change you save is stored in the Git repository and there you have all the history of your changes. Now you know why to use Git for version control, so we can move on to my computer and see how it's done. So I have a folder with US sales, my data in the CSV file, and revenue report. For the integration part, what I need to do from Power BI side is to open the report and save it as a project file. Uh, again, remembering prerequisites, you need to enable this preview feature. At least then I'm recording this video, it's still in preview. And to do so, I just need to go to File, Save As, choose a PBIP, choose where I want to save it, and press Save. And from here, my work is done. I can close this file. Now you will see that some parts appeared here. So I have a revenue report dot data set, revenue report dot report, I get ignore file and this PBIP project file that I just saved. And of course my original report file. So in this case, what I have here uh, you can, of course, browse and look what's in it, but um, the main things are that some things are separate. So here I have a separate semantic model and a separate part for the report. So for example, it could be uh, visuals, uh, how many pages and so on. So all of this is necessary for versioning control. Now, what I need to do first is to create a local repository. Um, I wrote a blog post about what all those terms, or I can call them uh, curse words uh, in the Git world means, because for the simple Power BI professional, uh, lost programmer, um, it's quite difficult to grasp them. So I try to write very clearly what is it. So if you don't know, just go and check that out. But if you do, we can move on. And here, what I need to do is to open everything what's here um, in the Visual Studio code. So I need to do that for the whole uh, folder. And here I can choose open with code or open with VS code, it depends what will be written for you. And here I have my Visual Studio. And again, on the left, you can see all the same artifacts that I have in the folder here. Now, the first things what I need to do is go to source control in the third uh, icon on the left side. And what I want to do is initialize repository. And it's written, the folder currently open doesn't have a Git repository. You can initialize a repository which will enable source control features powered by Git. So this is exactly what I need. And I press it and here I have all my changes so-called. Of course, you can see I didn't do any changes in the report, but now my local repository, it's empty and I need to fill that in. So I need to uh, stage all those changes. So I can just press this stage all changes. Of course, don't forget to write a comment message. In this case, it could be um, uploading files for the first time.
And now committing all of that to my local repository. That's it. Now what I need to do is to go to Azure DevOps and set up some things there. So here I already have an organization and some project, but in this case, I will create a new one. Um, for your organization, it probably will be your company name, for example, uh, not your name, but in my case, I'm here representing only myself. Um, and for the project part, I need to create a new project for my uh, report. Because for example, if I would have another report like product report, then I would need to have another project for it. And as you can imagine, this is done only once per project. So new project, we can give it a name, for example, revenue report version control or whatever. Uh, for the advanced part, it should be version control git, of course, and at least in this case, and for work item process, you can choose whatever you are using, but for the simplicity case, uh, I will just choose basic. And this is how I will create my remote repository. So here, if I go to the repos, I have it empty for now, but of course I would like to connect my local repository with my remote repository that is here. To do that, I can just copy this HTTPS request under clone to your computer. So copy the URL. Again, go to Visual Studio, the same source control, but if I move over on the second source control uh, word, I can go to three dots, choose remote and add remote. So now I can provide the URL, press on add from, add remote from URL and provide a name. So I can call it revenue report repo, for example, press enter. And usually the new window opens and asks for credentials. But in this case, since I'm working with Git, uh, it's not asking that all the time. So just be mindful of that, that it could ask you to do it. But of course, it's very simple step. So now what I need to do is to press publish branch on the left. And this is how I'm just publishing everything. What's what is on my local repository to my remote repository. So when it's finished, I can go again to Azure DevOps, refresh the page. And here I have everything what I have on my local repository. So this is how I, con how I connect both of them. Now the last step would be to connect everything to Power BI. So how to do it? I need to go to Power BI service and create a workspace. And this workspace needs to be a premium workspace. And I can assign a premium capacity, a trial capacity, a fabric capacity, or whatever I have there and on my disposal. So again, prerequisite states that you need to be able to do that or to ask someone responsible to do it. So I can just create a new workspace, call it again, revenue. For example, yes. And on the advanced, I need to assign a capacity. In this case, I have only trial, but that works too. And now we need to go to the settings, Git integration. And here I have option view Azure DevOps account. So this is my account. And 
as you can see, I don't have a possibility to use something else, for example, GitHub. So this is why I did everything in Azure DevOps and on the connect Git repository and branch, I need just to choose my organization and a project I want to use. So for example, revenue report version control, Git repository and a branch. In this case, I have only main, but if I would like to start making changes, it would be great to create a new branch. If I would like to collab collaborate with others, so work on the same file together with someone else, then the best case is to have different branches for different people. And of course I can check whatever branch you want, but usually if I have here like a production workspace, so I should choose always the main branch. And after selecting everything, I can connect and sync. And the syncing is starting. As you can see, I don't need to upload anything here. I already have a report and semantic model from Git updated, not updated, installed here, I can say, or uploaded here. So I can check if the report looks the same as on the desktop part. The only thing is I cannot see any data. And this is because my semantic model is not really refreshed or set up correctly. So I need to do that. And I need to go to digital refresh. If source credentials are correct, everything is great. I can put a refresh. So for example, I will just leave it like that. It doesn't matter on this case. And I need to refresh the data set. And after refreshing the data set, all the data will be visible in the report. And now after the semantic model is refreshed, I can go to the report. Sometimes I still need to refresh visuals. And now I can see the data. So now if I want to make some changes, I need to go to the project file because otherwise all those other parts won't be updated. So in this case, for example, I would like to create a new measure that it's called number of units and it's just simple count of units. So I will create number of units measure. In the file of control S. Close it. And if I go back to the Visual Studio, I will see under source control that some changes were made to the model.bin file. So here I need to stage the changes, write the message, new measure was created. Commit and sync changes. Here it means that I will push my commits, will pull and push commits from and to main branch. So in this case, I'm pushing all my commits to uh, DevOps. And after it's finished, I can go to Azure DevOps, refresh the page and see where is this model.bim file. Here it is. And somewhere here, I should find the mine number of units. Yeah, I think here it is. Now, if I go to Power BI, the uh, service, my revenue VS, I will see that semantic model needs some updates. 
So I just press source control on the top right and update all. Now, after everything is synced, if I go to the reports and edit it, I my new measure here and I can, for example, even create new visual like a card, for example, save everything. Go to the reading view again. So I changed my model a little bit. And if I go again to the workspace, now it shows me that I have some changes that are uncommitted. So again, if I go to source control, I can add those changes. So commit that to the uh, Azure DevOps. So new visual edit. I can select what I did. So in which branch I need to push in this case or commit, sorry. Uh, in this case, I have all in main. I'm committing that. And now all the changes appears here also, of course, if I refresh it, but since it's visual thing, it's not that easy uh, to see it. You need to know how it's written in some JSON or .bim file, uh, but of course you can find that. And now the only thing what what needs to be done is that everything from the remote repository would be um, pushed or updated to my local repository. And now how I can do it is on the bottom on the left I have main part and here this synchronized changes. So if I just breathe this one. In this case, I will just pull all the commits from my remote repository by pressing OK. I should have everything. So as you saw, if I press here on visualize commits on the commit graph, I will see my new visual edit even and here the offer. And the same could be checked in DevOps. As I said, of course, it's not that easy to indicate exactly the place from all of these files where everything is. But if I go to commits, here I have new visual added. So everything is there and ready to use. Now you know how to integrate Git into Power BI. So if you still have any questions, let me know in the comment section. And this video is the first part of the Git and Power BI uh, series, where I will talk uh, how to revert your changes to the previous version. And for example, how to use this integration for easier collaboration with others. So stay tuned and see you the next time. Take care.